So look at how crazy this is. He just stole the guy's main and that's it. So in the early days of StarCraft 1, they started to assemble the very, very best games of the whole year into something that was called the Pimpest Plays. Slang didn't really keep up to, to this day, but back then, you would take, whether it was a special tactic or a general strategy, or maybe just an absolutely crazy game that went on for a long period of time and it wasn't clear who was actually gonna take it until the very end, you would assemble them into a list and, and all the fans of the game, myself back then, and a lot of other people would watch uh, and, and look at the crazy things that could actually happen in a game of StarCraft. And today we're gonna take a look at one of my favorite ones. This was called Use Your Illusion and it was rank one in Pimpus Pay, Pimpest plays, excuse me, of 2002. So this is very early on in the history of StarCraft. Star Leagues were just starting to become a regular thing and pick up in popularity in Korea. WCG had emerged at around this point in time. There were plenty of lands and tournaments all over. Uh, and it was kind of an exciting time. This was also around the emergence of Counter-Strike 1.6. And, um, you know, Quake had already been a thing for some time, but we were really getting to see games pick up and competitions pick up and viewership pick up. With any esport, it doesn't have to come out uh, big in the first year. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time for people to really get into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to play this. From a replay and now, this is, this is from 2002. People's play style and strategies back then, they were they were very primitive. This is from Cholera's channel. His mic is pretty rough. I might even reduce this. So back then, everybody played on Lost Temple. Um, this map was thrown out of the... Um, the, the lineup of maps just muted. I think I'm just going to mute it. Um, this map was thrown out of the map lineups just because it wasn't balanced. The expansions weren't evenly distributed in a way that made a lot of sense. They hadn't figured out reverse ramps, as we can see here. Um, you can see that the, you, a probe has to go all the way around up through here to get up. There was another issue just north of where this probe is. Every natural expansion had a high ground area. So a lot of games were just people putting siege tanks uh, or cannons, or dragoons, or we even had games with sun, uh, hatcheries and sunken colonies on the high ground. So it just became a, a, a weird thing of trying to, to cheese your opponent by putting stuff on the high ground where they couldn't expand. The game had been out long enough that everybody knew that you were supposed to be expanding pretty quickly. So if you watch some of the older videos we did here, this wasn't as, uh, you know, back when there was uh, HOT Forever versus XDS Gur, where there was a lot more just one basing. People would go all the way up the tech tree and then, you know, expand around when they were running out of resources. This was where everybody knew to expand. Now, in this game, and by the way, these two players, um, not pros, somewhat of an unremarkable uh, set of players. And the strategy even back then, this was a little bit counterintuitive, right? He sent one probe over here. You can see on the minimap, there's a second probe coming out. So... His strategy is to make gateways in the main. Now, back then, some people just didn't know how to deal with that. And to be honest, even to this day, it's kind of hard if somebody makes gateways in your main. The idea here was that you make two pylons next to each other because that way the SCVs can't kill the pylons. Now, if you're watching, uh, excuse me, if you've watched the uh, YouTube video we made where we have Bisu Manor piloting and making gateways. You can see how much more advanced this rush became to where you could do it literally in your opponent's mineral line. Here, the idea was you'd have two SCVs. That, that way they could always beat the probe. Um, and so you could stop it that way. Now, the mod, just in case you're wondering, because some of you guys might experience this on ladder as Terran, what do I do when there's SCVs making gate or uh, probes making gateways in my base? The common response is to take five SCVs and attack the gateway. And you keep making SCVs and you keep trying to, to tech up. And um, over time, uh, you, you can kill off all the gateways and um, you know you, you, you recover from there. But the math wasn't that clear back then. And also, everybody was doing weird, different stuff. Even when I came back to StarCraft 1, I didn't realize how long it was going to take me to even get the hang of things. I've been playing for years now, maybe three years and a couple months, and I'm still learning. I'm still improving. So another thing to note, just to be slightly critical here, this uh, I think this pylon only powers these gateways. I think if the Terran wanted to, he could hit this pylon here. Um, so immediately, you got to look at the situation and go, okay, well, what is Terran going to do? This looks like it's already over. 
the barracks because because back then you made the barracks as part of the wall in to stop zealots from rushing you or dragoons from rushing you here. There was no um, recourse for gateways in your main, right? But this is where we start to see people come up with really cool solutions that were, um, I don't know, really changed how we understood the game. So watch this. He lifts the command center, pulls the workers, lifts the barracks. Now, as you can see on Lost Temple, your mains are actually very close to each other if you both spawn at the bottom left. So this command center has been lifted off. The barracks is floating. The two zealots are out now. And one thing to note is that when you see people lift their buildings off in the game, this is back before people just politely GG'd. So, like, <laughs> there were a lot of games where you'd win and the guy would, like, float his buildings away. You had people of such different skill disparity where one person, like, most games you look at now, the moment that you realize the game's over, you leave. Not just for your opponent, but for yourself. Because you have a limited amount of time on this earth. And it, if, if you were a kid playing back then, you probably had a limited amount of time that you were allowed to be on the computer uh, before your parents kicked you off or your one of your siblings, it was their turn to use it. So if you were really into the game, you just left. But then there were clowns and also people that just knew so little about the game, they thought maybe they could float their buildings somewhere else and win the game, right? So... Seeing the buildings lift, you might not immediately process what's actually about to happen. Yeah, float buildings to the corner of the map. E exactly, chat. So, the SCVs are looping around. And remember that wall and I was talking about earlier? Take a look at this. Let's not forget, SCVs are stronger than probes in StarCraft 1. 60 HP for an SCV. Probe is very brittle. And uh, he saved up enough money. Yeah, now look at this. Don't forget, SCVs beat probes in a fight. So these probes can't fight. A forge is made because in the chaos, I think he realized, wait a minute. He's coming at me. And I, of course, you don't have gateways in your main. Maybe you can make a forge a little bit quicker. And there's too many workers. And now look at what's happening. The Zealots are running all the way around. Well, one of them uh, is, at least. And he's about to plug up the entrance. Look at this. Boom. And one Marine can be made. And this was uh, a crazy concept. That's right. The, some of the Terran buildings can fly. Suddenly, the solution that, that you know Terran would use to stop a Zealot rush from hitting their main was then used to wall in where the Protoss' spawn is and basically abuse the, the fundamental features that Terran have to, to lock the Protoss out of the, the cheesy win. So look at how crazy this is. He just stole the guy's main, and that's it. He, he he can he, he can kill the nexus he can relocate um the uh once this is killed he can lift this off and put it here and on the mini map if you can follow my mouse at the very bottom of the screen here what about these gateways he's going to kill that eventually the, the protoss can't mine the protoss doesn't have enough money to make a nexus he doesn't have any probes so the game is done so this was the craziest game uh at that time of 2020 or sorry 2002 i might have said 2022 earlier i'm sorry 2002 it's a great game it's a crazy moment if you follow a lot of starcraft now it it kind of looks like two decent gamers you know banging rocks together trying to come up with i mean frankly it's just it's just not the greatest game right to modern standards we've come a very uh, a very long way but it is cool to see what people were coming up with back then uh and to see how much the game has evolved uh if you like really old content like this, not so much pro-oriented, but kind of the early strategies of StarCraft Brood War and the interesting ideas and um, techniques that were used that had a massive impact on how the game was understood today, please let me know in the comments. Do like and subscribe. That helps this kind of content get out there to as many people as possible who would probably enjoy it. And please go to tastelessthreads.com. That's my merch site where you can find all sorts of cool stuff I think you will enjoy. Have a good one. I'll see you in a future video. Bye-bye.